thank you, chairs. Uh, thank you also to the work package leader for having invited me here. It is for me the first chance to be here. So even if we were strongly encouraged by uh, the chairs to immediately go into the works of today, I cannot start my presentation without paying my compliments to the organizers. It was for me a great surprise. And sorry is if I'm so out of the scope of, this, uh, of the talk, uh, which I'm going to give, but I really appreciated the music and dances yesterday and hope that the mood is, keeping, <laughs> is kept up uh, by uh, that wonderful organization of the event. Um, as I said, I'm quite new for this audience. Uh, you might know what JRC is, you might uh, know about this project. I think it was mentioned more or less one year ago in a similar event. But I'm here to give you some more information about this initiative of the European Commission. Um, so I will give some background information, describe the pillars of this initiative on breast cancer, uh, describe what we did so far for preparing this initiative because it's quite complicated, it's multifaceted, so it, it ne really needed a lot of study behind, and describe the context, how we detected uh, through a survey. Uh, I work for the Institute for Health and Consumer Protection of JRC. Um, we work in collaboration with uh, the Directorate General for Health and Consumers and I know um, you might be already uh, knowledgeable about the fact that they are normally known as DG Sanko, so when you, you will listen to me uh, later on mentioning JRC and DG Sanko, just to be clear, we are two Directorate Generals of the European Commission collaborating for this uh, initiative. Um, um, what is this initiative related to? Uh, we aim to improve healthcare quality uh, um, in the specific area of breast cancer uh, via the um, publication and development of web-based evidence-based guidelines. So let's say the new edition of the screening uh, guidelines for breast cancer and associated to um, European Quality Assurance Scheme extended to all stages of breast cancer care, so not only to screening. And this European Quality Assurance Scheme is based, uh, underpinned by the accreditation legal framework for the European Union. Um, I know yesterday there was a lot of debate which should be the best indicators to show inequalities among countries. Um, I basically took the example of mortality, but I am well aware that survival as well is a very strong indicator. But mortality, if not paralleled to the incidence, can also show that where there is room for improvement of quality of care. Um, and let's be clear, when we are looking to inequalities, we are looking at differences. And this does not mean that we want to delete differences by worsening everything till the highest mortality, but that we want to improve uh, things in those countries which are in uh, worse conditions. Why the European Commission decided or took initiative directly? Uh, in the Lisbon Treaty, um, there is a clear commitment for the European Commission to support countries in very specific areas where it was thought, and in my opinion very correctly, I hope you shared this opinion, um, that a European coordination could simply help and support countries in not duplicating initiatives like for the production of guidelines or having um, key performance indicators which are different uh, and differently collected in different member states. Um, and also, how to, take, um, how to ensure that those guidelines and quality indicators are correctly implemented and monitored. So through an evaluation and m close monitoring, also the implementation uh, is enhanced. And of course, when, while we are talking about the development of the new guidelines for cancer screening, we need to uh, remember what was the Council recommendation in 2003 already um, promoting the uh, breast cancer screening organized the program. 
There is also the European Parliament resolution, again uh, speaking about inequalities in cancer treatment facilities, and also a clear statement for, from the Council conclusions in 2008, mentioning again exactly what was already envisaged in the Lisbon Treaty, what would be envisaged in the Lisbon Treaty, about associating um, quality assurance, or let's say better known as accreditation, uh, with a web-based, evidence-based, or let's say associated with evidence. And we can summarize evidence with web-based, evidence-based guidelines. And also, as I'm in the EPAC environment, I would like also to remind what you have in your statement, in your vision to tackle inequalities in cancer mortality amenable to healthcare. We are aware while starting this initiative of the many expertise of the long standing and high standing work done so far at European at world level. So of course we will build on the past and encompass all existing initiatives and all experts are welcome to collaborate as I will state many more times uh, in the next slides. Um, what is the aim of this initiative is to give women a high degree of confidence in receiving the quality of uh, care they deserve across all stages of breast cancer care via, as I said, an establishment of platform of evidence, and this I will explain better later. This is a priority. Why I write this? This is a functional priority because we want to base the quality assurance scheme on evidence. Therefore, without evidence, without a platform of evidence, we cannot have an evidence-based quality assurance scheme. We risk to have maybe an ex post evaluation where those criteria or requirements are appropriate or not. Uh, so we try to not to put the horses behind the cart. Um, what is the method? As I said, we want to encompass all expertise uh, available. So we thought of um, doing a work in open consultation with all experts. So there will be a preparation of draft proposals with a restricted group of experts. It will um, be submitted to consultation to federations, to national contacts. We already nominated national contacts, one per each country for the project. Um, with stakeholders, so patients associations, of course, policy makers, uh, if available, um, hospital managers, whoever has direct interest is invited to um, give, provide feedback, and through a consensus process, we uh, will derive the uh, evidence for underpinning the quality assurance scheme for breast cancer. The time frame, the project, including the piloting of the quality assurance scheme, is due by 2016. As I said, uh, as guidelines are the basis for the quality assurance scheme, they need to go hand in hand, the two parts of the projects, or at least the guidelines slightly anticipating the development of the quality assurance scheme. So we need to ensure that there is a coordinated and timely approach for the two pillars of the project. And I want to highlight in this definition of guidelines the word systematically. Systematically means that you apply a methodology, possibly a standardized methodology. So there is a great need. I know that when I pronounce the word standardization, is it also thought as something static, but it can be also thought as something dynamic. Uh, the point is always trying to apply a well-developed methodology to develop guidelines in order to ensure that what will be the requirements in the quality assurance scheme and the recommendations to be implemented in the countries have a strong evidence or strong consensus, in some cases, behind. Uh, what was done so far, of course, is the basis of what will be developed in the future by the European Co Commission in collaboration with the previous and uh, present actors in the field. 
the European Commission, the European institutions in general and European Commission were active in this field since quite many years and in particular the development of the guidelines through the past four editions and now with the supplements started 20 years ago so we are almost 10 years ago sorry so 20 we are almost approaching um, a, a sort of birthday for uh, the start of, of the work um, the fourth edition was issued in 2006, so beyond the supplements, which are really important and they were just issued, we need to ensure that there is an update and that next updates will be already appropriately programmed and planned. We need to ensure that the guidelines are not simply one step development, but that implementation and life cycle is also uh, planned coherently and appropriately since the beginning. And here you see also an important link. We are always saying passions are important. Passions need to be at the center of the process. And this is a very good example on how it happened that uh, Europa Donna, which is the um, advocacy group for breast cancer, exactly based their guidance for women um, concerned by breast cancer uh, on the existing guidelines. Main uh, inspiration was taken by the European guidelines. And as regards the quality assurance scheme as well, we are aware that many initiatives are already ongoing at European level. Um, there are some private um, associations uh, organizing uh, quality assurance schemes, you know many of them, and some public ones. And here, not all of them are listed. We detected 23 active in Europe in parallel with different criteria, with different approaches. But there is one important common thing to, through them all, that most of them require um, the establishment of key performance indicators. This means collection of data. This means databases. I don't want to enter in the debate of cancer registries and uh, data protection, but it means that um, as European Union we should try to encompass what is already existing, try not to duplicate, try not to add any burden, if not really uh, necessary because we want to measure one through more essential indicators which are evidence-based. How uh, the European Commission uh, designed the project? We started simply as we were new in the area, googling, meeting experts, and designing a first concept. We presented that concept, which was very easy, uh, is very easy for me to, to explain it. Uh, we had to cover all breast cancer stages uh, for the quality assurance scheme, so the best option for us was to develop European guidelines for all, cancer, all breast cancer stages. But during the workshop, we received a strong feedback from experts, stakeholders, and also national contacts. We considered those two workshops as a sort of a large advisory board because we needed the feedback from what would be, who would be the user and the implementer of, of the products. Um, that uh, guidelines are already developed in a very good way by other bodies, at least for those stages which are beyond the screening and diagnosis. So we thought, yes, we can still cover all uh, breast cancer stages with a quality assurance scheme, but we need to ensure that the requirements for the other stages are derived by high quality evidence. So we need to establish for the other stages a platform for guidelines. So to invite those bodies already developing guidelines to propose their guidelines, they will be evaluated through a tool. Just to make an example, Agree2 might be used, but also others might be agreed at European level to be applied for selecting high quality guidelines. And of course we need to start working, but still I want, I want to say that Upon your feedback of experts, uh, stakeholders, patient associations, national contacts, we keep this document open because 
we will see how the project will evolve and we might see pitfalls along the way which we didn't really think of since the beginning. It's a very complex and challenging and as I said multifaceted project so uh, it's still possible that uh, not everything is perfectly planned. Um, here there are two slides where I list the preparation activities which were needed to prepare the project. So we started with uh, preparing a database of existing networks and then um, with papers uh, we organized them in a database uh, really to uh, prepare the knowledge platform for the project and to make it available also for the experts and working groups in future. Um, but one important thing I want to mention is what was most necessary for us, I will insist on this point, is to ensure that what will be developed will be also implemented. So we need to ensure that it is feasible and applicable in different organizational settings. So the first thing we thought to do is to uh, map out how the breast cancer care is organized in different countries. Uh, so we organized a survey on this, covering uh, also other areas, updates on, on uh, cancer screening and breast cancer screening in particular. Um, and we also wish to um, develop a web hub. Well, all the deliverables will be hosted. Well, there will be transparent information on key performance indicators, on those services which are certified and qualified, etc. So, again, going towards the transparent information uh, about the quality reached in the different services. Uh, for that survey I was mentioning, we invited the 30 countries. And I really want to take this occasion to thank a lot the national contacts of, uh, of EPAC uh, because they collaborated with this survey very much. They provided, uh, even if the survey was very demanding, they requested information. And 25 of those countries responded and provided the information to us. The update regarding the uh, screening programs, in particular as regards breast cancer, is that of the 25 countries responding, 22 um, hold screening programs, of which 21 are organized. So yes, of course, the best option is 100%, but we are already in a very optimal situation for breast cancer. These are updates from 2011 because the survey was conducted in 2012. And here you just see an image with different colors. Those different colors in the pie chart represent the different organizational settings in the countries. So this is a strong, a strong indication for us that we need to develop something which is very modular, very flexible, in order to be adaptable to all situations to all conditions where responsibility for different stages are allocated at different entities. And how to perform this in order not to lose the patient or the woman at a certain stage. We need to ensure that there is a strong check uh, at the interfaces between stages. How can, reach, how can we reach this? Ensuring that the patient is well informed of what she can expect from one stage to the other. And also, hopefully, um, sending the information to the next stage. With this slide, I just want to close with my special thanks to the EPAC team, not only for having invited me, but also for having made me aware and informed of very active and very well-working networks. Here I take the example of Eurega. I participated to the workshops, and I really appreciated their whole very high-level, hands-on, uh, practical uh, support and ideas. So I hope to still have the chance to collaborate with them. The EPAC national contacts again, and all those experts and stakeholders which built so well the, the uh, existing situation and hope they will collaborate with us. They are all welcome to um, come and, and support us and help us. 
If you want to receive more information, this is our webpage and the email. Um, as uh, Rosemary already anticipated, maybe not all of us will be at the discussion panel and me myself, I, I cannot be here, but if you have any question to ask, there will be a coffee break and then uh, you can simply contact us and I will be very happy to provide further information to you. Many thanks.